Hi everyone, I'm Jay Fadden. Thank you so much for joining us today on This Is A Day, joined by Father Reed and Kevin Nelson. I've got some things to talk about today, something I really want to talk about. And Father, we also have a great show. We do, because Father Joseph Coffey, a Navy chaplain and recruiter, is joining us today. We caught up with him down in Baltimore. And let's see now, the Pope has a message for the 46th World Communication Day. We're going to go to Piazza Venezia in Rome, and also we're going to talk about this week's March for Life in Washington, D.C. Kevin, what will we hear about in the news today? All right, Jay, and speaking of the annual March for Life, we have some details on that as well in the news. Also, the Pope addressed members of the Neocatechumenal Way of the Vatican, and we take you to St. Peter's Square for a blessing of animals. All those stories have the news, Jay. All that and much more right now on This is the Day. Fad, thank you so much for joining us today on This Is The Day. Joined by my wonderful friends, Kevin Nelson and Father Reed. And how are you today? Doing very well. It's been, a, it's been an exciting week already, yeah. particularly uh, with the March for Life uh, in Washington. And we were able to bring yesterday that tremendous uh, event with young people uh, from uh, the uh, Verizon Center. Well, before we even get to that, we actually started too with the Transitional Diaconate Mass in the Archdiocese of Boston. See, it's been such a crazy week, I almost forgot about yeah, that. No, yeah, no, that was a great day in, in the life of the church because yeah. of these men who have decided to enter the priesthood, and this is just one step, and in a few months, God willing, they will become priests. Exactly, they were uh, men from Boston, men from Springfield, uh, from uh, the Oblates of the Virgin Mary, and also the Friars of primitive observance. So all kinds of uh, represented groups there and dioceses and Cardinal Sean ordained seven new transitional deacons and please God they'll be ordained priests later this year. Yeah, it's always really exciting to see it. So I was thrilled about that. And we did, we had some live uh, or we brought some coverage of the pro, uh, March for Life and we had a crew down there following Archbishop Sean O'Malley. Yeah. Uh, so that was a wonderful, I just actually I spoke to Kate and you know what happened? So she's down there and a young person comes up to her and she said, thank you so much for covering this. Hmm. Because there isn't a lot of coverage. But this brings me to my point that I want to talk about. And okay. it, it really doesn't have to do with the March for Life, which is such a, a great event. And I think it shows that so many people are pro-life and for life. It's the HHS directive by the Obama administration, mm -hmm. which more or less says that Catholic churches, uh, hospitals rather, insurance, have to pay for contraception, sterilization, mm -hmm. so much more. This is horrendous. This is horrendous to ask the people who are filled with the faith, who believe in life from the moment of conception to natural death, to then sign off on this, say, okay, well, that's fine, that's fine, because it isn't fine, and it's not what we believe, and a government shouldn't have the right to do that. Yeah, in fact, um, the U.S. Bis bishops have vowed to you know, fight this, uh, this Good. whole edict. And um, uh, Archbishop uh, Dolan, Cardinal Designate Dolan, said, you know, basically now we, we have a year to figure out how we're going to vo violate our consciences, which really is an affront to uh, the right uh, to our religious freedom. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, I mean, you think we had all these people down there for the pro-life march. Mm -hmm. And now what the Obama administration is saying, that we will give you drugs that can cause an abortion. So it just, for me, is I, I, just a terrible thing, and it's, it's not the direction I think any of us want to go in. And I'm glad that Archbishop Dolan and uh, Cardinal O'Malley mm -hmm. have stepped forward, and the USCCB, and many, many Catholics out there have stepped forward and said, hold it, wait a second, this is way beyond what we should be doing. I think of a lot of my friends who work in health care, particularly those who work yeah. in, in Catholic hospitals, you know, and uh, what uh, an awkward not awkward, what a, what a devastating position, really, it puts them in to violate their consciences. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, you know, while we're talking about that, if I can just, just step aside for a second on something else, I, th I think of one person who we know who's on our board of trustees, um, oh, uh, Anne, yeah. uh, who uh, works in a Catholic hospital. And did you know her husband, Tom, is 60 years old today? Now you sound like Kevin Nelson. 
shout outs to people on birthdays. Well, well I just want to say happy birthday to Tom. I'll say happy birthday because he always watches the show. Tom's a great guy, and uh, and he's all he comes to the telethons, answers phones. Usually, he has the big money phone, by the way. Just so we're clear on that. But um, just another in general, thing, too, I just wanted I to say that. No, I'm glad you did say that, and and I want to direct people to. Uh, to a, a special website where they can see pictures of a group of young people who traveled to Washington and really believe in uh, the fight uh, for respect for life. And that's at uh, flickr.com slash Boston Catholic. And that's the photo stream from George Martel, who went with a group of 500 young people from Great this pictures. Archdiocese of Boston. Great yeah. pictures. I saw Father Dan Hennessy down there, Father yeah. Matt Williams. Uh, these are just two that I had seen. And sure. of course, uh, Father Jonathan Gaspar. Yeah. So I and saw the all Cardinal. of them. And Cardinal Sean. of course the Cardinal was down there. Yeah. But I just I just had to say that because that was bugging me a little bit. I'm glad you did. Well, you know, and hey, now tomorrow night we have uh, a little event happening too in Rome, right? We Is it the Vespers? Yeah, Vespers for the conversion, the Feast of the Conversion of St. Paul. Mm -hmm. So we're all, we love going to Rome. As a matter of fact, um, I think we're going to be going to Rome today to Piazza Venezia. Is that your favorite, by the way? Uh, I love this. I love this square. It's actually a circle, uh, but, <laughs> but it's a piazza uh, because, you know, you recognize it so much. It's actually down the street, the, the Via uh, dei Fori Imperiali from the Colosseum. But you recognize it, well, for two reasons. One, because there's this 15th century uh, palace, uh, the, the Palace of Venice, the Palazzo di Venezia, and it was there that the Second World War was announced by Mussolini. Mm -hmm. But you, uh, you realize that it's Piazza Venezia first and foremost because of what's called the wedding cake. Mm -hmm. And it's this, this huge altare della pace. Well, why am I telling you here? Because we can go to Rome, and I can tell you from the very Piazza Venezia, let's take a Viaggio right there. Hey, ciao everyone. We're back in Rome. I'm Father Reed, and uh, we're here in one of the craziest places. We're in the thick of things in a place called uh, Piazza Venezia, at the opposite end of the Via dei Fori Imperiali from the Colosseum. This square, Piazza Venezia, takes its name from the 15th century Palazzo di Venezia, the Palace of Venice the brown building right across the square along the western side. It was built in the mid-1400s by the future Pope Paul II, who was then the ambassador from the Venetian Republic, and so it bears the name of the city of Venice. Well, interesting history, and that's not all, because during the period of fascist rule, Mussolini actually occupied part of this palace as his office. Italy's entrance into the Second World War was announced from that balcony right in the center of the building, directly over the main doorway. Part of the palazzo is a museum now, the Museo Nazionale, with a picture gallery. It has a collection of porcelain and a number of ancient, medieval, and Renaissance carvings. Now, dominating the piazza is the incongruous white hulk of the Altare della Patria. It was inaugurated in 1911 and is often flippantly referred to as the wedding cake because of its tiered appearance and very ornate decoration. It was actually built to commemorate the unification of Italy and it houses the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, a museum which documents the struggle of the 19th century unification of Italy and space for temporary art exhibitions. It also has this great glass elevator which is opened back in 2007 which whisks you to the top of the monument where you can enjoy fabulous views across the center of the city and well beyond. So, if you ever have a chance to come to this crazy place, do take a ride up and see it for yourself. Well, now you've seen the Piazza, Piazza Venezia, here in the eternal city of Rome. Ciao, amici. Ci vediamo presto.
There it was. I was thought you were going to trip over the bike on the <laughs> way out. It looked like I was nervous about doing that very thing. What's interesting is you see it, <coughs> and you know Mussolini was up there, and when you see pictures of that event, mm. it looks as if there's hundreds of thousands of people, but it's very small, actually, in that area. And by the way, Peter and I were across the street, and if anyone sees the traffic, we almost got hit about 15 times coming I can back imagine. and forth because it was just so much Take your life on the line walking really? around that area of the world. It was, but what it's an true. experience. What an experience. And it does kind of look like a big wedding cake. Yeah, I so can see why they call it that. Yeah, the wedding yeah, cake. Very clear. Wedding cake. Yep. Kev Kevin, you had a very scary experience this past uh, weekend, uh, Sunday, as a matter of fact, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mary, someone ran a red light and yep. hit Mary and flipped the car with the kids in it. Yeah. But everyone is okay. Everyone's okay, yes. Just a little yeah. little nervous um, about that. Yeah, pretty amazing. Yeah, a and uh, Mary had to unbuckle and, and kind of slide her way out and then get the kids out of the car also. So God is good that no one got hurt and uh, the other driver and Mary and your kids and that everyone's okay. Yeah. It's just a car. Yeah, that's right. Now yeah. you have to rent one, but you rented something that's about a bus, right? Yeah. It's huge. <laughs> Yeah, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Kevin, what's going on around the world in the Catholic faith? All right, hey, thanks, Jane. Father Reed, hello, everyone. It is time to take a look at the news. We begin from the Vatican. During an audience with some 7,000 members of the parish-based faith formation movement called the Neocatechumenal Way, Pope Benedict XVI said that their celebration's aim must be to encourage members to partake fully in the liturgical life of the parish. Catholic News Service's Carol Glatz has more on the Pope's address. Pope Benedict held a special audience with thousands of members of the Neo-Catechumenal Way, including its founders Kiko Arguello and Carmen Hernandez. The audience came the same day the Vatican released the latest in a series of Vatican oversight measures of the Way. In a special decree released today, the Vatican approved the Way's unique rite or celebrations. However, both the Pontifical Council for the Laity and the Pope underlined that the celebrations were not exactly liturgical, but rather were to pave the way for lapsed or inadequately formed Catholics to partake more fully in the parish church's liturgical life. The Pope praised the efforts of the Neocatechumenal Way in evangelization, but continued to urge them to always work in communion with the local diocese. In news from around the country, the 39th Annual March for Life took place yesterday in Washington. The rally opened with a national anthem, followed by a prayer, and then a number of speeches by political leaders, pro-life activists, and religious leaders. Nellie Gray, who is now 86 years old, is the founder and president of the March for Life Education and Defense Fund, which is a group that organizes the march. She led off the speeches by telling the crowd that their consistency in showing up in such great numbers to mark each of the 39 anniversaries since Roe v. Wade decision legalized abortion shows they love their country and love their pre-born children. She also said they love the abortionists that they are trying to educate. Earlier in the day, in an event shown here on Catholic TV, the youth rally and Mass for Life took place at the Verizon Center as well as the D.C. Armory. After the Mass, the youth poured out of the two locations to join with other youth who were celebrating Mass at different places. They walked down to the mall to join the March for a Life. Seven busloads of youth from the Archdiocese of Boston were on hand as well. After celebrating Mass with Cardinal Sean O'Malley at the Shrine of the Sacred Heart in Washington, they joined up with the other youth to march down to the mall. In other news from the Vatican, last week we told you here on This is the Day about St. Anthony Abbott. What we didn't get into was the fact that the feast day of St. Anthony is a big day in Rome for especially farmers who bring their animals to St. Peter's Square to be blessed in honor of the patron saint of animals. Rome Reports shows us more. Sheep, cats, cows, chickens, dogs, and horses from all over Italy were gathered together in St. Peter's Square for the feast of St. Anthony Abbott the patron saint of animals. For a few hours, a small farm was created in front of the Vatican. The Feast of St. Anthony is especially important for these farmers. Today is the Feast of St. Anthony. We are here for the blessing of the animals. From our farms, we brought horses, donkeys, and mules. This is a great day of celebration for farmers. It's very important. St. Anthony is important to us and for farmers from all over Italy. Besides the farm animals that came in from the countryside, many Romans also brought their dogs, cats, and other pets. I brought my dog because I'm Catholic and I wanted to be blessed. 
I love all animals, and sometimes they're even better than people. This festival is celebrated every January 17th in memory of St. Anthony, an Egyptian monk from the 3rd century. He's remembered for his care of animals and is usually represented with a small pig by his side. During the visit to the Vatican, Cardinal Camastri stopped to bless the animals one by one. It's meant to protect them and their owners, as well as being a tribute to all animals in the world. And finally in the news, at a news conference at the Cathedral of the Blessed Sacrament in Altoona, prior to a prayer service celebrating respect for life, Bishop Mark Barczyk of Altoona Johnston remembered the Joe Paterno as a good Catholic, a family man, and a friend to many. Paterno, the iconic football coach at Penn State, passed away over the weekend just 10 weeks after it was announced that he was suffering from lung cancer. That announcement came nine days after Paterno's 61-year career at Penn State University was terminated in the wake of the Jerry Sandusky child sex abuse scandal. According to Bishop Barczyk, Paterno's commitment to prayer, family, and faith was a great example to students at Penn State over the many years Paterno was there. Bishop Barczyk also expressed his appreciation for the efforts Paterno and his wife Sue made to support the Diocese of Altoona Johnstown, particularly their leadership in raising funds for the new Catholic Campus Ministry Center now under construction at Penn State. Well, that is all the news we have for you on this Tuesday, January 24th, 2012. We send it back over to Father Reed and Jay with more of This Is The Day. Kevin, thank you very much. And you know, Kevin had a chance to speak with uh, Father Joe Coffey. Mm. Uh, good guy. Good guy, Navy Chaplain. Uh, in fact, he was named Navy Chaplain of the Year a few years ago. This is a guy who, he kayaks, okay, <laughs> he climbs mountains, he follows troops into battle, he, he flies fighter jets, and celebrates Mass and hears confessions all at the same time. So I can't think of a better <laughs> guy to time? recruit. Well, not all at the same time, <laughs> but I mean all in the same life. Okay. Uh, I can't think of a better guy to, uh, to represent uh, men who are uh, military chaplains than Lieutenant Commander Father Joseph Coffey. And much needed. You know, in today's military, we've heard it from so many chaplains who we've had on, whether it be in Iraq or Afghanistan or even here, just joining us on the program, sure. where they keep saying the need is great, that yeah. these guys, uh, it means so much to their faith life to have them. So and they great. support not only you know their own Catholic brothers and sisters in the military, but, but also people of all faiths. Absolutely. Yeah. So Kevin Nelson had a s chance to speak with Father Coffey, and here's what they talked about. And joining us now is uh, United States Navy Chaplain Father Joseph Coffey, and thanks for being with us, Father. Thank you. Good morning. Yeah, um, actually, if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, maybe your journey into the uh, reserves. Sure. I'm a Navy priest. I'm a Navy chaplain out of Philadelphia. Originally, that's my home diocese. And when I was in the seminary at St. Charles Borromeo Seminary, I met a recruiter talking about the chaplain candidate program, how you get a direct commission as a chaplain while you're still in the seminary. And I thought that sounded terrific. So I asked my bishop, Cardinal Bevilacqua, if I could be in the chaplain candidate program. And he said, yes. But he said, give me at least five years in a parish before you ask to go on active duty. So that's what happened. I got ordained in 1996. I served for five years in a parish, stayed in the reserves. And then I asked if I could go active duty. And Cardinal Bevilacqua let me go. And that was 10 years ago. And I went in right after 9-11 happened. Hey, t talk about that. Um, uh, now, you're, you're part of the Archdiocese of the military, right, because you're active duty. That's right. I'm active duty. So any priest who's in the military on active duty, we come from our home diocese or our home religious order. We're kind of like on loan to the military from anywhere from three to 20 years. And when we're in the military, we're part of the military archdiocese. Archbishop Brolio is our archbishop while we're in the military. And then when I'm finished on active duty, I'll go back to Philadelphia and Archbishop Chapu is our new Archbishop. And, and how about your experiences? Where have you been uh, in your service? Well, I'm now on uh, 10 years active duty. My first tour of duty was in Okinawa with the Marines, Combat Assault Battalion. So I was with the Marines in Okinawa, and I got to go to the mainland and go to Mount Fuji and Hiroshima, Nagasaki, Tokyo. got to travel a lot. And then I went on an aircraft carrier out of Norfolk, Virginia, the USS George Washington for two and a half years. And that was also during the war, so I was in the Persian Gulf for six months, part of the uh, war effort. And then I went to Cape May, New Jersey, where I was, with the ch I was the chaplain for the Coast Guard Recruiting Center. That's where they have the, um, the boot camp for active duty, the basic training center. 
And then I went back to the Marines at Camp Pendleton in California with the Marine Air Group 39, that's the Marine uh, Helicopter Squadrons. And that got me to Afghanistan for seven months with the Marines. So I was able to go and travel around the country uh, saying mass for the Marines. It was really good duty, it was really enjoyable to be able to say mass for the Marines. And then about a year ago, they put me in recruiting. So now I'm recruiting for Navy chaplains, and I'm based in St. Louis, Missouri, and I'm here in Baltimore for the bishops' meeting. Talk about your experience on, uh, in active duty, being in, in these places, as, as you said, the Persian Gulf, and, and, and being in, uh, dealing with people that are in harm's way and, and some of the needs that they have. Well, on the aircraft carrier, I felt pretty safe because when you're an aircraft carrier, if they get to the carrier, we're all in trouble. So I did feel safe on the carrier, um, but I was the Catholic pastor for almost 6,000 sailors. And that was really neat to be able to say Mass every day and hear confessions and do a lot of counseling. But I also would travel to the smaller ships that was part of our strike group. And then whenever the chaplain's on a helicopter, they call that the Holy Helo. So they would fly us to the smaller ships and we would say Mass and hear confessions and all that. So that was great duty being uh, part of the ship's company, but being the only priest in the whole battle group, that was really neat. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then when I was on, on land, uh, to be able to go from what they would call FOBs, forward operating bases. So they would um, fly me by helicopter where I'd go as part of the uh, convoys with the MRAP, the large armored vehicles. And I'd have my mass kit always with me, and no matter where I went, I would say mass for the troops. And a lot of times the the Catholic troops hadn't had mass in sometimes up to six months. They said, Father, we've been waiting for you. So um, my plea is to priests to think about it, to serve uh, for a while in the military, because we have a real desperate shortage of priests that are willing to serve for a while in the military. And then we're here to ask the bishops if the bishop will let the priests go. And we, we had the opportunity to talk to people that are in uh, Afghanistan and uh, through, um, through satellite. and. Uh, they talk about that, and they talk about community and how important that is. Even if the priest chaplain doesn't get there, they do have some prayer groups that they form as well. And maybe if you could speak on that, and and you know, you mentioned the need too, but uh, you know how excited they were to see somebody coming after a few months of, of no mass. Well, it just feels terrific to be able to show up, and uh, I have a little cross on my flak jacket. Right away, they all know that's the chaplain. So I say, hey. Who's Catholic? I'm saying Mass. <laughs> and, you know, field Mass is pretty expeditionary, so it's, it can be said literally anywhere. Uh, I need a couple of boxes, and that's my altar. Yeah. And uh, Mass is pretty quick. And sometimes guys are literally about to go out on foot patrol. So be able to be able to uh, maybe hear their confession and say Mass for them, give them the Eucharist. There's nothing greater I can do as a priest than to be able to provide that for them. So if someone's watching this, uh, a priest, uh, what, where would they go about, uh, how would they go about uh, finding well, out more about? Well, they would check with their bishop and say, Bishop, um, I'm thinking about the military chaplaincy. What's the possibility of me going for a couple of years? And if the bishop's open to letting them go, then they would contact one of the recruiters, either for the Navy, the Army, or the Air Force, and we'd be happy to get the process started. Excellent. Well, thank you so thank much for you being here. Thank you very, very uh, much. Appreciate your opportunity giving me to, to speak about it. Thanks. Good luck and uh, hope you find some more. <laughs> thank <laughs> you. Thank you very much. And we are back. And Kevin, you were talking when you came over here. You made your little jaunt over to this section. Jaunted, yes. That it seems to be a real tight-knit community with the chaplains because he knew some of the people from around the Boston area. Yes, yeah, um, uh, we, a great guy, uh, Father Joe, and uh, he, uh, he was saying how, um, actually in particular, when Father uh, Charlie Bork he knew, who helped him when he first um, joined the chaplaincy, and he knew a, a few other uh, Boston area priests, priests. So it's, a, yeah, like you said, I think it's a, it's a tight-knit community, and, uh, you know, they, they gather together as well. I have great respect for, for priests who uh, give uh, part of their priesthood, part of their life, to military chaplaincy because it's it's a very different kind of way of exercising your priesthood. I remember Father Richard Erickson would come in here all the time. One time he even brought his dad, yeah. and they talked about it. I remember and that. absolutely, absolutely loved, absolutely loved mm -hmm. being a uh, a chaplain and wanted to get back to it. So there is something there that really feeds a lot of the priests who mm -hmm. decide to do that, decide to become a chaplain. And great service too. Well, to I the men and women who oh yeah. are serving us. Yeah. Well, I know the Holy Father is coming out with an announcement about 
the World Communications Day. That's right. This, this very day, this very week, uh, he has his usual message for this, the 46th World Communications Day coming up uh, this year. And uh, it's interesting because I actually preached about something along the same lines this weekend. Mm. You know, we have to be open to God speaking to us in so many ways, through the scriptures, of course, and the celebration of the liturgy and the sacraments, but also through our interaction with one another. And part of being open to God's word is also having silence. So the, the, the theme of uh, this 46th World Communications Day is silence and the word, and that is the path to evangelization. And the Holy Father speaks about the, the um, interplay between silence and the word. The, the, the two go hand in hand, because if you're not able to be quiet, you can't really listen and understand uh, God speaking to you in so many ways that God does speak to us. So uh, that's being released this very day. Very true. If we were quiet on this as a day, though, it wouldn't make much of a show. So we're true. not going to be quiet right now. You know, it reminds me, Ethan did something it's really true. Ethan did something really funny. We were wrestling, and so I said, Ethan, okay, we should stop now. And he said, yes, yes, yes. So I turned around, and he jumped on my back. I said, you just said yes. He said, yeah, but deep in my head I was saying no. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so you, you always have to listen. Hey, we were supposed to have a big announcement this week, and we're still going to have that big announcement. Friday. On Friday. Oh, yeah. On Friday. And Kevin's trying to figure out what it is. But it could be many things here at Catholic TV, actually. Yeah, so much going on. In fact, we were at, um, if I can swing over to, you know, we were at the um, uh, Russian Icon Museum yesterday with A Way of Beauty with uh, ah. David Clayton. So we're starting to film stuff for that, too. That's not the big announcement, though. I know. I mean, that's, I, a, well that's, that's a big announcement. That's the, only thing I can, uh, that's the only thing I can think of. I love oh, Way of I Beauty. Mean, it's great. Yeah. 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 I, was, I was telling Jay, uh -oh. yeah, I, I put up uh, some uh, Facebook pictures <laughs> of the uh, car uh -oh. in the accident, and I was, I, was tech I was sending them over on Facebook with pictures from the Way of Beauty, and they clumped them all together. So I had a shot of David Clayton, and I got a picture of a crashed car, and I'm like, I hope people don't think we were shooting that during the show. But well, now they know. <laughs> now they know better than that. But once again, so this Friday, you have to tune in. We've got a great announcement, and I think I think you'll enjoy it. I mean, it's it's different. I will put it in my teasing. That's a good, good way enough? to put yeah, it. It's, yeah, different. it's different. It's different. It's a different yeah. type of announcement. It's it's nothing we've announced before, so it's something very different. Well, thank you so much for being with us. We'd like to thank uh, Father Coffey for joining Kevin, tell us a little bit about the chaplaincy and how important that is. We're glad that we had the opportunity to s talk about the Pro-Life March, and you'll be seeing some footage from that, too, because Cade and Dave got some great stuff down there with His Eminence, Colonel Sean O'Malley of the Archdiocese of Boston. I know all of you are in our thoughts and in our prayers. And as we uh, end this show, we ask God to keep us uh, very respectful of the great gift of life that he has given to each one of us to every human person from the first moment that we're conceived in our mother's womb until the moment that God calls us back to himself and to give us a strong and a deep respect for human life in ourselves and through the church. And we ask God to bless us together, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great day, everyone, a great week. We'll see you soon. Stay tuned to Catholic TV.